set well. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Arson is working to investigate how a West Side fire started late last night. How much officials say it will cost to repair the damage. The New Hampshire primary is happening today and already we've got some surprise results from the first communities that voted. I'm Trevor Alton, Manchester on the latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam. Boy, it is a lot colder today than it was yesterday and it's kind of misty out there. Mike has your forecast. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, February 11th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Mike said we're into this rainy pattern and I saw a lot of rain yesterday. I did yesterday as well. If you maybe a few sprinkles this morning, what's on tap? Next, you as the saying goes, you ain't seen nothing yet. We uh -oh. may get a whole bunch late tonight and maybe up to about this time tomorrow morning and then things will clear up. But uh, step outside this morning. It's that I mean, just it's cold. Yeah, it it, feels it, yes, yeah, that damp cold. It's the damp cold that, that sneaks down the back of your neck. And we do, like you said, have a little bit of mist, a couple of showers out there, a slight breeze. What else can we pile on top of that? It's one of those mornings. Uh, throw the covers over your head if you could, but you got to get up and at them. We do have still a couple of uh, scattered showers around the area, maybe a, uh, perhaps a little heavier downpour right to the uh, south and west of Kerrville, and we'll just continue to see a bunch of uh, light showers and what's too light to be picked up on radar. Some of that uh, mist and a little drizzle out there. 47 at the airport, 44 in comfort, so we are actually on the above normal side. But see, again, it's the, the dampness out there because we've got dew points that are just neck and neck with the actual air temperatures. Plus, there's a little bit of a breeze. So wind chill temperatures, 37 up the road toward Bernie, 43 here in town, 41 at Stinson. And basically, temperatures aren't going much of anywhere. Mold's on the high side and it's probably going to continue to go up uh, given the fact we have so much moisture around here. We will stay in the upper 40s. Maybe close to 50 all day long. A couple of showers this morning, mist, drizzle, that damp chill, and again, may make it up to um, about 50. Now, a few showers around here, and then late tonight, uh, perhaps a couple of uh, heavier downpours, as well as a thunderstorm or two, and tomorrow morning as well. That's going to be something we'll have to maybe deal with on the morning commute tomorrow. This morning looks like it's just kind of damp out there. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo, and it looks like most of the roads are pretty damp, right? The, pretty damp, and we actually have uh, one or two transguide cameras uh, that kind of show what folks can expect. So right now, uh, not showing any accidents. Now, we do have some construction on 1604 up there on the northwest side. We'll get to that in just a second. Take a look here. This is moving over to the east side. This is I-10 East at 1604, and this will cooperate with me. There we go. There's I-10 East at 1604, and as you can see, moisture on the lens. So if we have moisture on the lens, you can bet some of those areas out there will probably be probably be slick. So use caution, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. 1604, Kyle Seal, those lanes of traffic headed from the I-10-604 interchange back towards Bandera Road. Right now, everything's shut down for some guardrail repairs. Everybody's being diverted onto the access road uh, right about Babcock, so keep that in mind. Other areas like I-10, the Dominion, so far, things are pretty quiet out there. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. We're following the latest developments this morning involving a fire that happened on the west side of town. San Antonio fire crews say it happened at the food mart Mom and Pop in the 1300 block of Calabria just after 9.30. They arrived to find flames shooting through the roof of the convenience store. It was already closed for the evening. The building is a total loss and in danger of collapsing. Damage is estimated at $120,000. It remains under investigation for arson. Students and staff at Reagan High School are preparing for a somber day in class this morning after finding out one of their fellow classmates was found unconscious in the school's weight room. The school principal says a team of counselors will be on campus to help students cope after the student was found around 2.30 yesterday afternoon. Staff members tried to save the student's life, but that student did not survive. SAPD is investigating the case as an apparent suicide. We're also following the latest involving three suspected burglars in the medical center. San Antonio police released these images taken during the holidays at the Pinnacle Research Facility. It was targeted, but it's unclear what was taken. The facility researches several topics, including Crohn's disease and hepatitis. If you recognize any of these individuals, call the Proof Property Crimes Unit. That number is 210-207-8326. In politics, an unexpected victory by Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg. After getting three write-in ballots out of the five casts, the race remains deeply unsettled. ABC's Trevor Alt shows us what's expected in the New Hampshire primary later today. 
The first votes have been cast in New Hampshire and already some surprises. Senator Amy Klobuchar leading after three tiny townships, but in Dixville Notch, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg won for both Democrats and Republicans, even though he's not even on the ballot. Also overnight, Bernie Sanders holding a rock concert rally. The Vermont senator won New Hampshire handily in 2016, and it could be a repeat victory today. If we win here tomorrow, I think we got a path to victory for the Democratic nomination. Sanders finds himself atop the race in New Hampshire and according to a new Quinnipiac poll across the entire country. But Mayor Pete Buttigieg with rising numbers of his own. Trying to position himself as the sensible alternative. And there is a hole in Senator Sanders' plan uh, financially that's bigger than the entire size of the United States economy. Uh, I, I think uh, it's an example of the kind of politics that frustrates people. Big promises and not a lot behind it. Outside that top tier of two, some candidates fighting falling numbers. <laughs> Senator Elizabeth Warren has been crisscrossing the state, as has former Vice President Joe Biden, though he's trying to look past New Hampshire. Stick with me 24 more hours, and I promise you, we're going to do just fine. Some of their momentum has shifted to Amy Klobuchar. As you've probably heard, we're on a bit of a surge. And a reminder, New Hampshire is a much more typical secret ballot primary. It's a lot easier to administer than the Iowa caucuses. Officials here are banking on cleaner results, and we could have the first declared state victor in the race tonight. Trevor Ault, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. New details involving coronavirus in addition to the people under quarantine at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. The city has confirmed they are monitoring a group of people who traveled back from China this past weekend. There have been no confirmed cases in Bear County as of this time. Metro Health saying the public risk remains very low. Test kits for the new coronavirus have arrived, but it will take two weeks for them to be fully operational. Meanwhile, California health officials say they accidentally let a patient who tested positive for coronavirus leave a hospital. The patient in question and three others were treated in a San Diego facility until initial results found out they did not have the virus tested positive. That patient was in a 14 day federal quarantine, but was brought back to the hospital. Overseas, the death toll continued to rise in China, China, bringing it to more than 1,000 people dead. President Trump and Vice President Pence attended a dignified transfer of remains last night at Dover Air Force Base after two soldiers were killed in Afghanistan over the weekend. The unannounced stop made by the president was for Sergeant First Class Javier Gutierrez and Sergeant First Class Antonio Rodriguez Gutierrez from San Antonio Rodriguez, Las Cruces, New Mexico. The 28-year-olds were awarded their Sergeant First Class ranks posthumously. The incident that killed the two still under investigation, but the reports a person in an Afghan uniform started firing on U.S. and Afghan forces. Well, visitors at an amusement park were trapped in one of the attractions in Santiago, Chile. Monday, they were suspended in the air for, in the air rather, for at least 15 minutes at about 80 meters. According to one visitor, facilities began to present failures and stopped. The amusement park Fantasy La Fantasylandia reported there was a very short power cut for generators to be activated. 438, 47 degrees. Getting a harsh prison sentence still ahead on GMSA. The next celebrity to face punishment amid the college admission scandal. And the losing streak continues up next. A look, look, next rather, look at last night's Spurs game and who they're up against next in the rodeo road trip. And live cam giving us a look outside. We're in for a wet day today. Mike says we'll get some good rain chances overnight tonight. He has details coming up. Spurs added another loss to their rodeo road trip streak this week. He went up against the Denver Nuggets without DeMar DeRozan this time. Lonnie Walker IV taking his place in 19 first half points. Derek White from the opposite corner for a wide open three and at the end of one, Spurs are up 40-30 over the number two team in the West. Second half, Spurs got out to as much as a 23-point lead thanks to Trey Lyles and a three-pointer. Later in the game, Paul Millsap's three-pointer gives the Nuggets their first lead of the game. Silver and Black in the night losing 127 to 120. Ouch, they blew a 23-point lead. The Spurs will be going head-to-head -head with the Oklahoma Thunder later this evening. They will continue their rodeo road trip at the Chesapeake Energy Arena. At 7 o'clock. I think at 9 o'clock this morning, we are definitely going to need the Sears soapbox.
because they blew a 23 point lead. At some point, we may need soap in our mouths, too. <laughs> You know what I mean? 442, 47 degrees. Your food labels are getting a new makeover after 20 years. Why health officials say the big change will make a difference in your eating lifestyle. Up next on GMSA, uh, latest on the college admission scandal. The harsh sentence handed down by one judge. And who is on the receiving end? Welcome back. Your time now is 445. Well, the college admissions scandal continues this week as a judge hands down the harshest sentence yet. ABC's Paula Ferris has the details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the biggest Varsity Blues sentencing yet. Doug Hodge, former CEO of a global investment firm and father of seven, on Friday was leveled with a nine-month prison sentence after pleading guilty for paying nearly $900,000 to get four of his children into elite colleges under false pretenses. Hodge is in a first-person op-ed written for the Wall Street Journal. He says, I failed to scrutinize the application process as carefully as I should have. I failed to ask tough questions and I looked the other way on questionable behavior that I never would have tolerated in my business career. So what could this sentence mean for Lori Lachlan and the rest of the Varsity Blues parents who are yet to face trial? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Paula Ferris, ABC News, New York. After more than two decades, the labels that you see on the back of your food are changing. The FDA has put new food label regulations in place based on new health and nutrition research. 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz explains how it's improving your health. Those nutrition labels on our food should make it easier to make good choices. With some simple changes such as bolder type and the adjustment of serving sizes, it's going to be a lot easier for consumers who want to eat healthier to lower their risk for heart disease and other conditions. Here are four of the important changes that will help you pick the healthiest foods. First, the serving sizes are more realistic, with amounts for some foods reflecting what people really eat. Also, if a package holds two or three servings, but there's a good chance someone will eat it all in one sitting, say a bag of popcorn, the label must show nutrition info for one serving and the whole bag. Another label change, since Americans don't get enough vitamin D, important for bones and potassium, which helps lower blood pressure, they're now listed instead of vitamins A and C, which most people do get plenty of. Also, the calorie count will be in big, bold type and expect to see added sugars. Now that it's featured, manufacturers may have more of an incentive to reduce the amount of added sugar in their products. While there's always been a line for sugars, it referred to both naturally occurring sweeteners plus the ones added in, like granulated sugars or high fructose corn syrup. The FDA now requires added sugars be included on a separate line, making it easier to judge a food by its label. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. 448. It's time to check the roadways. Potentially a messy commute this morning because the roads are a little bit wet. And that, <clears throat> excuse me, and that potential is definitely there. So far, we've been very fortunate. We're off to a pretty good start. As you take a look at the map, you can see no incidents out there. So that's the great start to this morning and that uh, construction that we did have out there. 1604 Kyle Seal era that has picked up and is out of the way. So as we look at I-10 and Dominion, no problems eastbound or westbound on those main lanes of I-10. 35 at 604 up on the northeast side. Traffic moving along fairly well. There's where we had that construction zone. 35 at Calcio. You can see lanes in both directions running smoothly. No problems there. 21 at Hildebrand and then 1604 Babcock there. They're around the bend. Now right now traffic's not too bad, but once these roads get slick and uh, you do have that open road, long turns and curves just like that. You want to slow down well ahead of those areas and that's pretty much going to be the advice all week long as uh, we continue monitoring uh, the other roadways. Right now 37 at Goliad. We don't get that camera too often, but uh, things look pretty good there. So all in all, not a bad start to your morning commute if you're getting ready to head out or maybe you're getting ready to head home from the overnight shift. Just hopefully you make it to your destination before we get a lot of moisture out there on the roadway. Where was that one camera from earlier at the top of the show? That you That's going to be on the far east side, 604 okay. East at I-10 East. Because there's nothing showing up on radar as far as any. And it was just, just that one camera. Just, you know, some mist around. Well, I definitely had mist. My you windshield did? wipers okay. came on a couple times. I See, I didn't see anything this morning, but we're going to be going on with mist, of, you know, a little couple of sprinkly showers here and there. I got caught in a huge downpour yesterday. It was like only lasted yeah. a little bit, but it was 
dark. And I know we had some, uh, I think we had a couple of thunderstorm warnings in mm -hmm. the afternoon. Yeah, there were some out in portions of the hill country. They were, were canceled. Um, today it's just going to be kind of, you know, like this all day long. Just some light mist. Temperatures really aren't going to go much of anywhere throughout the day. And here's a great little picture. And somebody tried to catch the moon, which is just past full. We had a lot of clouds around, obviously, trying to hinder that. But it was peeking on through there and you can see all the clouds in this picture right now and temperatures again are in the uh, mid upper 40s, uh, some low 50s and basically won't move throughout the day. We do have a few uh, showers around the area right now, obviously, and in the immediate vicinity. Again, there's nothing showing up on radar. A lot of uh, mist drizzle, but we'll see some of these showers throughout the rest of the morning. So just assume that the roads are going to be wet as you head off for your morning commute. 47 in town, 45 Balverde, mid 40s Hill Country, 50 Castroville is the warm spot if you want to call it that. Dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere are neck and neck with the air temperatures or close enough to it. So relative to the air temperature. There's a lot of humidity out there, which is why it's that damp chill. It feels so much colder on a morning like this than it does if the temperature were 35 degrees with dry air. Plus, there's a bit of a breeze, and so we do have a little bit of a wind chill. Wind is out of the northeast primarily, about 10, 15 miles per hour, and it's going to stay that way throughout the day. And temperatures, like I said, really won't go much of anywhere. We, I got 50 for a high today if we do indeed hit 50 degrees. As far as the humidity and the wind flow, uh, not much is really going to be changing throughout the next 24 hours. We still have the moisture coming in here uh, throughout the morning hours, and then we are going to be seeing things clear on out. Notice how the humidity kind of well, stays about the same. Maybe dew points go up a little bit, but by tomorrow night into Thursday, we get another surge of some cooler air in here. So what warmth we have tomorrow is going to kind of get negated. It's not going to be a Real, real, real cold, but we'll have some clearer skies and it's going to hold temperatures on the cooler side for Thursday and Friday. Uh, as far as short term today, we have showers around the area scattered here and there. This kind of broad brushes it a little bit, uh, you know, just sort of again scattered about. But then it's late tonight and early, early tomorrow morning. We have this line of some potentially heavy rain moving on through the area. Most of that's going to be gone by the time we get to the morning commute. There may be a few leftover showers, but then there could be some leftover ponding on the roads, uh, things like that, some runoff during the morning hours tomorrow. But most of the really, really heavy stuff, like I said, is going to be, say, about midnight through 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. 49 degrees today at noon. A couple of showers around the area. Same thing later on this afternoon. It's got 50 on there if indeed we do hit 50 degrees. Northeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze and it is going to be kind of that dampish cool. And then late tonight, early tomorrow morning, some potentially heavy rain, especially about 281 off to the east. Then we're going to be clearing out 65 with sunshine tomorrow afternoon. Thursday and Friday look great. Cool mornings, nice afternoons, a little on the coolish side. Maybe kind of snuggle weather for Valentine's evening. That's my little romantic throw in there. And then uh, Saturday, Sunday, we start to warm up a little bit more clouds, a couple of showers, possible Sunday into Monday. All right. Wow, the end of the week looks fabulous. Yeah, Thursday, Friday are going to be great. Awesome. 453, 47 degrees. The Connors are going live. Up ahead, how the show plans to incorporate New Hampshire primaries in their sitcom and what the actors have to say about it. Parasite's big win at the Oscar Sunday was historic, and the audience for it was historically small. Just 23.6 million people tuned in to Hollywood's biggest night, the smallest audience ever for an Oscar show. That's down 20% from last year and 11% from 2018, which previously held the record for the least watched Oscars. Tonight, The Connors will do it live, an episode of the Roseanne spinoff, which will incorporate actual live results from the New Hampshire primary as they happen. The sitcom is filmed in front of a live studio audience and stars as Lori Metcalf and Sarah Gilbert also have live theater experience. Metcalf has two Tonys, but they tell me this is a lot different. Well, theater is, yes, theater is live, but you've rehearsed for four weeks and you know what you're doing, and, th and it's not being recorded for posterity. <laughs> yeah, no one can play back your mistakes. Right. Catch that live episode of The Connors tonight on ABC. A couple of popular shows sticking around for a little while longer. The Good Doctor getting a season four on ABC. Sex Education, a season three on Netflix. And hopefully she's celebrating with some friends. Today is Jennifer Aniston's birthday. She's 51. 
And Grammy-winning singer Sheryl Crow is 58. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. She gives me hope. <laughs> She's beautiful. She is. Happy birthday to both. 457, 47 degrees. A new slot machine in Atlantic City. You don't even have to touch to play. Still ahead, a look at a new way of gambling. The tense moment caught on camera as kids are sent flying in the school bus. How police in Ohio say all this happened. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We have the latest on the coronavirus after another person tests positive. And what health officials are saying about that patient in California. Newly released video shows an Ohio bus crash had sent several students to the hospital. What led to this intense scene? Chillier out there. Rain chances uh, continue to be in the forecast. We may get a lot of rain before it is over, according to Mike Osterhage. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, February 11th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Don't forget the raincoat as you head out today because you're probably going to need it. When are we going to see the heaviest rain in our forecast, Mike? Uh, late, late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Most of it looks like it's going to be while we're sleeping, um, probably after midnight up through about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. We'll talk more about that in a moment. First of all, temperatures uh, just number-wise aren't that bad. We're at 47 degrees. We're actually about uh, 3, 4 degrees above normal right now. But it's that damp kind of chill because we've got a lot of moisture out there. There is a bit of a breeze, so we do have a slight bit of a wind chill to deal with as of right now. And yeah, it just is it's that cold that sneaks down the back of your neck. Plus, we do have some just regular old showers showing up. There's some mist and drizzle, but uh, just in the past basically half an hour, these things have really started to uh, kind of pop up from northern uh, Medina County, Hondo area up into the northwest portion of Bear County. There's some around Bandera and then also up to the northeast and uh, these a uh, couple of decent downpours here. So if you're heading out 10 or heading in on 10, you're going to be uh, going to be definitely using your wipers as these showers move across there. And there could be uh, one or two lightning strikes if these get going a little bit more as it looks like they are. And temperatures again are in the 40s right now and they're really not going to be moving that much throughout the day. We may get up to 50 at one point today. Really wouldn't count on it though. And like I said, there's plenty of humidity out there. So relative to the temperatures, and that's why it is that damp chill with all the moisture hanging around. Plus there's the wind chill to deal with. Wind is not all that strong, but just enough to make these uh, numbers feel like they're in the uh, lower 40s and even upper 30s. Molds on the high side is probably going to go up when the uh, latest count comes out later on this morning. So damp and chilly, a couple of showers this morning, chilly, a couple of showers, and then maybe some heavy rain. And that's going to be late tonight, say about mid the window would be roughly midnight through four o'clock in the morning, perhaps a few leftovers. Most of that should be out of here by the time we hit the morning drive and then mostly sunny skies after that and temperatures are going to be getting up into the uh, mid 60s and rest of the week sunny cool Thursday Friday look great warmer and more clouds maybe a couple of showers over the weekend details coming up time saver traffic right now here's officer <coughs> Marcus Trujillo well Mike no accidents yet and I stress yet uh, we've been talking about the, those outskirts uh, the cameras that we have out there on 1604 where we're showing some moisture on the lens now we already saw 1604 at I-10 and Mike just showed you where some of those storms are coming up on the northwest side this is I-10 at the rim and we're just now starting to get a few sprinkles there on the lens as well so be advised that you will have to reduce that speed increase that following distance and of course give it some extra time this morning you don't want to be leaving late this morning Mark and Leslie a 13th American has been diagnosed with the coronavirus as numbers overseas continue to skyrocket. Chinese health officials are now struggling to contain the epidemic. ABC's Andrew Dimbert shares details about the most recent U.S. victim. Overnight, a new case of coronavirus confirmed in California after a passenger on an evacuation flight out of Wuhan tested positive for the illness. They uh, come by every few hours and uh, take my temperature, pulse, check my lungs. This comes as at least 23 of the confirmed cases aboard this cruise ship in Japan have been identified as American travelers. They brought us new, new masks. Now we only wear these if we get the chance to go up on decks and they want us to now wear these when we open the door to get our food. Experts say the best way to control the outbreak is to identify symptoms, isolate the patient, diagnose the illness and treat if necessary. Many countries are using quarantine as the only course of action. 
There is no treatment. All I'm doing is sitting here in isolation. But in China, where the virus has killed more than 1,000 people, officials are taking drastic measures to ensure patients are isolated. No! This man even forcibly removed from his home over concerns about the virus spreading. Back in the U.S., health officials are reiterating that coronavirus, which is slightly more contagious than the average flu, cannot spread from person to person simply by being in the same room. But they do say people should stay at least six feet away from anyone who is sick. And there is a bit of good news. A quarantine is being lifted for a group of Americans who have spent the last two weeks in isolation on a military base in California. As for another group of Americans who have also been quarantined, they only have two days left in their incubation period. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. In Ohio, new video is being released of a school bus crash that sent eight students to the hospital. Take a look. The video shows the incident in Perry County. This was back in December. A crash reports that, well, a report says that a man driving a Ford Mustang ran a red light and hit the bus. Oh, my gosh. Very disturbing. It went off the road, flipped on its side. The driver of the Mustang reportedly has a broken back. Injuries to the kids and the bus driver were not life-threatening, thank goodness. Hard to believe when you see this video. Thornton was reportedly driving, though, on a suspended license. Thank goodness those kiddos are okay. Right now we're at 506, 47 degrees. Federal judge is clearing the way for T-Mobile's effort to combine forces with Sprint. Details coming up. And next, a closer look at one of the most important jobs in the courtroom that often goes unnoticed. And live cam giving us a look outside. So glad to have you with us on this Tuesday morning. Four days to buy your Valentine a gift. Just a reminder. Just about 10 minutes past the hour, the job is pressure packed, complicated and sometimes educational. We're talking about court reporters, the person sitting alongside the judge during trial, making a written record of every word spoken. Paul Venema takes us into the courtroom for a closer look at what is one of the most important jobs there. You see them in most every trial on TV, usually barely visible, sitting in front of the witness stand, quietly recording every word spoken for the record. We literally at the Court of Appeals could not do our job, but for your good job. Chief Justice Sandy Bryant Marion is talking about court reporters as she reads a proclamation from the mayor and city council designating this week in their honor. It is the reporter's job to produce an accurate written record of a trial or any legal proceeding that may need a record. We are writing on that little machine. We're writing everything everyone says. Not only that, um, we're also identifying the speakers and doing it fast. They must be able to write 225 words per minute. That's a challenge since most people speak at upwards of 300 words. Incredible amount of responsibility and incredibly hard because of different people in the way they talk. Trust me, I know, I speak very fast. My court reporter is a saint to deal with me. The job takes skill and training and requires certification. After all, there's a lot at stake, whether a criminal proceeding or a civil matter involving millions of dollars. It's a skill that has to be developed, and it might look easy, but it is not that easy to do. And it can be educational, since they're dealing with legal experts as well as experts in a variety of fields. It's interesting. Every day is different um, after 26 years. Um, I still love it every day. Complicated and often challenging, it's not an easy job. But whatever the case, a court reporter always has the best seat in the house. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. Your time now is 11 minutes after 5 and it's 47 degrees outside. If you're a Samsung fan, we have one, uh, we have a more on a big event happening today, showing off some of the company's new products. Plus, do you really know how to Google? We have suggestions you might not know about when it comes to maximizing your search results. Mornings were made for better things than rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. When considering another treatment, ask about Zelgen's XR, a once daily pill for adults with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis or active psoriatic arthritis for whom methotrexate did not work well enough. It can reduce pain, swelling, and significantly improve physical function. 
Zelljans can lower your ability to fight infections like TB. Don't start Zelljans if you have an infection. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zelljans for RA can increase risk of death. Serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened, as have tears in the stomach or intestines, serious allergic reactions, and changes in lab results. Tell your doctor if you've been somewhere fungal infections are common, or if you've had TB, hepatitis B or C, or are prone to infections. Don't let another morning go by without asking your doctor about Zelljans XR. In today's Tech Vice, we may finally see the long-awaited and controversial Sprint T-Mobile merger go through. Multiple reports say a federal judge is expected to okay the $26 billion deal today. The merger could create a company with 90 million customers. Samsung has promised to unveil some, quote, innovative devices at its event today in San Francisco. But the company sort of let the cat out of the bag already. It showed its new foldable phone during an Oscars commercial Sunday night. Still expect a new version of the S model phone today as well. Finally, the first ever slot machines that can be played over the internet. Yeah, they've been installed at the Hard Rock Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. These slots can only be played by those with valid Hard Rock accounts. If they're all being used, online players will join a waiting list. Now you can sit at home and lose your money. <laughs> those are your tech bites. Have a great day, guys. Well, learning new tricks to maximize your next Google search. Our RJ Marquez shows us some helpful adulting hacks that will have you using your search engine like a pro. You probably use Google every day, but did you know the search engine has a bunch of tricks to help you find what you're looking for more efficiently? Here are a few. Use quotation marks to search for an exact word or set of words. This is pretty helpful when you're looking up song lyrics or a phrase or maybe a quote from a book. Use the minus sign before a word that you do not want included in a search. For example, when you search Spurs, you get the information from our team and the soccer club in England. Just put a minus sign before Tottenham and you will only get news from our NBA team. Type the word site and then use a colon to search for something within a specific site. Think of this as a Google search that searches only a particular website. Use two periods between two numbers to search for a range of things. This could be used to search for information or a list about a movie decade, measurements, and prices. If you want the meaning of a word, type define and use a colon. This is basically an online dictionary. Google will even search the web to define slang words or acronyms like LOL. And something fun, you could play the classic Atari game Breakout by searching it on Google. The legendary Brick Breaker game can be found when you search Atari Breakout on Google Images. For The Nine, RJ Marcus. It's right now 517. Let's check on the roadways once again. Marcus, it's busy already? Not yet. Uh, just kind of waiting patiently to see what's going to happen. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Let's go from the map uh, straight over to uh, Transguide 1604 at Kyle Seal. And Mike warned us a little while ago that uh, some of that moisture could be moving across the area on that far northwest side. This is within that far northwest side. Now, this is that same uh, Transguide camera that just uh, about 30 minutes ago was crystal clear and where we had that uh, overnight construction. So folks, give it some extra time. Looks like we're in for, <clears throat> some folks could be in for a very long commute this morning. I am so glad I didn't wash the truck day before yesterday or yesterday or tomorrow Late. afternoon. Yeah, mm -hmm. tomorrow afternoon, okay. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a little stretch of sunshine. Yes, indeed, and some really pleasant temperatures as well. It, it's kind of bone chilling out there right now. Yeah. If you are heading off to, and I love this picture from the rodeo, um, if you can wait a couple days, that might not be a bad idea, but that's, uh, it's so fun at the rodeo. You know, they yeah. move it all around too, a lot mm -hmm. of different things. The uh, carnival's on the opposite side of the AT&T Center now, and a lot of fun out there, obviously, and get funnel cakes and bring us some samples, please. Uh, we do have lots of, now, there's nothing showing up in this picture, obviously. We're looking off to the east from the airport, but off to the northwest where Marcus was just showing that picture, 1604 Kyle Seal, uh, we've got uh, some of these showers over in toward Bandera and they have started to grow a little bit. So there are a couple of lightning strikes that are being detected there on the north side of Bear County. Everything is sliding to the basically northeast and again a couple of decent downpours there in northern Medina County as well just to the north of Los uh, right around Leon Springs Ball Verde and that's going to continue up there so yeah, a few uh, thunderstorms obviously are uh, thrown into the mix as well as these scattered showers this morning. Temperatures, we are on the above normal side. It is cool out there. 
It's and it's that bone chilling cold just because we've got so much humidity, all that moisture around here. There's a little bit of a breeze, so we've got a wind chill to deal with as well. Feels like 42 in town, 37 over toward Bernie and 38 in New Braunfels. Wind is out of the northeast at about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. It's pretty much going to stay that way throughout the rest of the day. As a matter of fact, everything's going to stay about the way it is right now throughout the rest of today. Humidity won't be changing all that much. Uh, wind will be primarily out of the northeast and we go into tomorrow afternoon and notice how the humidity is still about the same. Then we get a secondary surge and so that's going to pull in some drier air and actually some cooler air for Thursday and Friday and also going to clear things out. So that's why Thursday and Friday as well as tomorrow afternoon look very nice. Here's what's going on as far as the uh, computer model, the rapid update model, and we'll have scattered showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms around today and yeah, a couple of them this afternoon as well. They're going to be kind of spotty. Then we go into tonight and it's going to be about midnight in through the wee hours of tomorrow morning where we're going to have this line of some heavier rain and got some pretty good numbers showing up on some of the computer models as far as rainfall potential and how much moisture there is in the air to get squeezed out. And so that's why we could see some heavy rain in the wee hours tomorrow morning. Now the majority of that is going to be out of the area by the morning commute tomorrow, but there may be a lot of runoff. There may be some ponding, things like that tomorrow morning, uh, and then we're going to have a lot of sunshine by the afternoon. So as far as getting this rain, the timing of it's pretty good as far as being in the middle of the night. 49 degrees today at noon. Nothing's going to change throughout the day. We stay basically the same with temperatures. They may fluctuate a few degrees here and there. If we hit 50, fine. We'll have showers, even a couple of thunderstorms uh, later on today. And then tonight, late tonight again, is when we see the potentially heavy rain into the wee hours of tomorrow morning and 65 then in the afternoon. So we start to clear out. Thursday and Friday look great. Cool mornings, coolish afternoons, and should be a nice little evening for. Valentine's, although I think we'll see more clouds late Friday. Lots of clouds this weekend. A couple of showers are possible. Milder temperatures. Okay. Three days. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what do you think? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Three days to Valentine's Day. One, We're running out of time. <laughs> Three. Four, I'm sorry, 522, 47 <laughs> degrees. A hot mess up here. Up next, the new Harley Quinn movie is already out in theaters, but it's getting a new name. We'll tell you why. Here are lottery numbers. Take a look. Pick three, five, eight, five, fireball five, daily four, six, two, two, eight, fireball eight. And you cash five numbers, eight, 12, 13, 27, 30. Texas two step, 21, 23, 25, 33 with a bonus ball of five. A surprise performance that left people the Oscars confused and a changing the title of a new movie, sort of. CNN's David Daniel shares details in your Hollywood Minute. <laughs> that wasn't the only Damon Gotham looking for emancipation. Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn is quite a title if you're searching for movie tickets or putting up a theater marquee. So Warner Brothers is changing the title. Not officially, but now ticket websites and exhibitors can also use the much shorter title, Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. Eminem's surprise performance on the Academy Awards of his Oscar-winning song Lose Yourself has paid off in sales. According to The Hollywood Reporter, initial numbers from Nielsen Music and MRC data show 4,000 downloads of Lose Yourself on Oscar Sunday, nearly 2,000 percent higher than the day before. The five Oscar-nominated songs, all performed on the award show, also saw increased sales, led by the Cynthia Erivo track Stand Up from Harriet. Ryan Johnson is looking for actors. On the Oscars red carpet, the filmmaker told Variety that his Knives Out sequel will feature Daniel Craig returning as Detective Benoit Blanc, but since he'll be on a new case, it'll be a totally new cast. Johnson joked he could throw a rock on the Oscars red carpet and hit someone he wants in the movie. Point taken, but probably a bad idea. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, 47 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, President Trump and Vice President Pence attend a dignified transfer of remains of two U.S. soldiers who were killed in Afghanistan, including a soldier from San Antonio. A salacious on a man who pleaded guilty in federal court to burning three historically black churches in the state of Louisiana. 
And just how many people watch the Oscars this weekend? Not as many as you might think. We're going to break down the numbers. Good morning. It's Tuesday, February 11th. Don't forget your umbrella today as you head out. You might run into some showers, which we'll get details in a minute, but that could also cause problems on the roadways. Right, so a couple of things. First, uh, you will need your patience with you, and you're probably going to want to leave a little bit earlier to contend with the heavier traffic, slower moving traffic, uh, with slick road conditions out there, all those turns and curves, those connector ramps to clover leaves, those could be problems for mm -hmm. us today. We've already seen rain pop up on some of the transguide cameras around the city. And radar is showing a lot more rain as well. Temperatures, uh, just number wise, it's not anything, you know, just brutally cold out there, but it's that bone chilling cold. It's cold that, enough, you need a jacket. Yeah, that, that moisture that just mm -hmm. makes you, you know, you kind of go like this and. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> And uh, if you could throw the covers over your head, that would be a great idea, but uh, you got to up and at them. Uh, temperatures really won't move all that much throughout the day, and we'll have more showers and maybe some heavy rain tonight. There's the potential for some uh, heavy rain in the overnight hours. More on that in yeah, just a second. Look outside with live cam right now over by the airport. This is looking off to the east, and we're not seeing anything <laughs> from this vantage point. However, you look off to the northwest and, and to the north, and there's that line. And notice how this... Uh, even just, uh, what, a couple of hours ago, there wasn't much out there, and it really started to form up, and it's almost a, a solid line going all the way back in toward Lakey through Bandera, just to the south of Kerrville. And we did have a couple of lightning strikes that showed up just a, about 10, 15 minutes ago. They may have uh, died down a little bit, and some moderate to rain associated with this, and that's all moving off to the north, uh, to the not east-northeast, Canyon Lakes, and Marcus, you're seeing some of that as well. And there's a lot of it that's too light to be picked up out there. Leslie was talking about how she had to use her uh, wipers this morning with a lot of that uh, mist on the windshield. Temperatures mid to uh, upper 40s, but the dew points are almost what the air temperature is. So relatively speaking, there's a lot of humidity out there and we have a bit of a wind chill to deal with as well. So it feels like it's in the, the low 40s and 30s. And again, stays this way pretty much all day long. Mold yesterday was on the high side. It's probably going to continue to go up given the fact we have a lot more moisture in the atmosphere. We've got a great stretch of weather. We've got to get past late tonight, early, early tomorrow morning, and then a nice stretch of weather. Question is, will that last into the weekend? Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So you said no big problems yet? No accidents just yet, Mike, but you know, you and I both know that can change in a matter of seconds. Now, right now, as we take a look at the map, the traffic flow seems to be uh, fairly decent right now. Everybody's traveling at the normal travel time speed. No delays currently. Now, we did see some uh, moisture on the lens up on the far, far uh, east side, I-10-604. We've seen it out there, I-10 at the rim, and now, we're seeing an I-10 at Callahan. If you take a look at that uh, lens a little bit closely, you start to get a little bit of moisture out there. So those long turns and curves, some of those huge flower ramps, you want to slow down well ahead of those areas and general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Leslie? Thanks, Marcus. Well, Fire has put a Westside convenience store out of business. It burned through the building in the 1300 block of Calabra Road late last night. Katrina Weber is there with a the live report. So, Katrina, have investigators figure out, figured out rather how it started? Well, the last word we had from firefighters was that that was still a bit of a mystery. They have no question, though, about the future of this building. They say it will have to be torn down. There wasn't much that firefighters could do at all to save this store known as Food Mart Mom and Pop. Flames were already through the roof when they got here. It took them some time to put the fire out. They say that was because of all the merchandise inside. Even though there's a sign outside that says this business is open 24 hours, firefighters say it was closed when the fire broke out around 930 last night, so there was no one inside and no one was hurt. Now they say that this building does pose a threat of collapse, and that is the reason it has to be torn down. Uh, they say that it is unstable, and so that next step will be demolition. Reporting live from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The body of a soldier from San Antonio is back here in the U.S. He's one of two U.S. soldiers killed in a weekend attack in Afghanistan. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence attended a dignified transfer of remains last night at Dover Air Force Base. President Trump and Vice President Pence making an unannounced stop at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware Monday night. They came to attend the dignified transfer of two U.S. soldiers. Sergeant First Class Javier Gutierrez and Sergeant First Class Antonio Rodriguez were killed Saturday in an attack in the Nangahar province. 
Gutierrez of San Antonio, Texas, and Rodriguez of Las Cruces, New Mexico, were both 28 years old and assigned to the 3rd Battalion, 7th Special Forces Group, based at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. They were awarded their Sergeant First Class ranks posthumously. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien called the soldiers fallen heroes and warriors, also telling reporters on Air Force One that their deaths were, quote, terrible sacrifices for their families, end quote. The incident that killed Gutierrez and Rodriguez is under investigation. There are reports that a person in an Afghan uniform started firing on U.S. and Afghan forces. The motive for the attack is unknown. President Trump and Vice President Pence returned to Washington after the transfer was complete. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Meanwhile, President Trump announced his $4.8 trillion budget proposal this week, but the plan would not wipe out the deficit for at least 35 years. The proposal includes a familiar list of deep cuts to student loan assistance, affordable housing efforts, and continuing to shrink federal safety net. While it's unlikely to be approved by Congress, his request additional money for the military, national defense also includes border enforcement. In Louisiana, the man accused of burning three historically black churches last year has pleaded guilty to arson. The U.S. Attorney's Office says 21-year-old Holden Matthews copied similar fires that happened in Norway in the 1990s in an effort to promote himself as a black metal musician. All three churches were destroyed. He will be sentenced in May, and he faces a maximum sentence of 70 years in prison. A former Alabama Chief Justice says he plans to place a Ten Commandments monument at his foundation's offices in Montgomery today. The monument source of a two-year legal fight that ended with Roy Moore losing his position as Chief Justice. Moore says the monument will now be on display at his office of his nonprofit organization. Spurs add another loss to their rodeo road trip record. The team went up against the Denver Nuggets last night without DeMar DeRozan. Second half, Spurs got as much as a 23-point lead going, but later in the game, the Nuggets would pull ahead, and the Spurs just could not get things done. Silver and Black end up losing 127 to 120. Oh, guys. Well, the Spurs will be going head-to-head -head with the Oklahoma Thunder later this evening. The game at the Chesapeake Energy Arena starts at 7 p.m. 537, 47 degrees. Still ahead, have you got your Valentine's gift? Yet. Retail experts say a record amount of money will be spent this year. We'll tell you how much. Plus, you watch the Oscars. If you didn't, you're not alone. Not a, by a long shot. Why the award show saw its lowest audience ever. And live cam giving us a look outside. Mixed bag weather-wise this week. We've got rain, we've got sunshine, we've got cooler temperatures, and then warmer temperatures. Mike has details. A roofing scheme ends with guilty pleas and prison sentences. Mark Anthony Rodriguez and Richard Stevens were arrested back in 2016, accused of stealing from customers. Now they're both serving a 15-year prison sentence. Mark Rodriguez just took a plea deal, and he pled guilty to a theft charge. Richard Stevens pled guilty last week. The pair owned Durazon Roofing. Prosecutors say they took as much as $600,000 from their victims without completing the work that they were paid for. Many of their victims were elderly. Bear County District Attorney's Office offered three warning signs to look out for. Don't feel pressured into making a deal with the business right away. Take the time to verify licensing and look for reviews. Also be aware of secrecy. If you're being told to keep the deal between the two of you, say no. And number three, a deal in cash makes it hard to prove a crime is committed. So be sure your form of payment can be traced. 541, 47 degrees. Up next, how one state is honoring Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman during Black History Month. In honor of Black History Month, Maryland's unveiled statues of two of its most iconic residents, Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman. They're now installed in the Old House of Delegates Chamber in Maryland State House. The sculptures are cast in bronze and they weigh about 500 pounds each. Maryland's governor says these influential leaders are now permanently enshrined in the state's history. Rodeo season is here. If you're looking for something to do tonight, we've got a few things for you. Lots of things going on today. You can Get free fairgrounds admission when you wear Spurs gear. There'll be a Spurs watch party tonight at 4, or starting rather at 4 p.m. at the Bud Light Courtyard, pending no inclement weather. Get a chance to see the Spurs Coyote, catch the game, and much, much more. In addition to the fairgrounds, there will be a barrel race in the horse show area. 
Swifty Swine Pig races happen throughout the day, and tonight's Rodeo Musical Entertainment will be with artist Lauren Elena starting at 7 p.m. Rain or shine, the rodeo is the place to be with over 60% of the fairgrounds being covered. That's good. Valentine's Day only a few days away. It's usually an expensive gift-giving day for people in a relationship. And this year, in B-Day spending is expected to reach unprecedented levels. According to the National Retail Federation, the average person will spend a little over $196. It's an expected record-breaking total of $27.4 billion, nearly $7 billion more than last year. According to the survey, spouses and significant others are expected to get more than half of that chunk of money. Many people planning to spend their money on classic gifts like greeting cards, candy, flowers, and of course jewelry. But uh, some will buy Valentine's Day gifts for friends, children's classmates, and even their pets. Oh, speaking of pets... Who will be the best in show? Judging at New York's Westminster Kennel Club dog show ends with the final prize this evening. More than 2,600 dogs from 49 states and 19 other countries took part in this year's competition. Seven dogs are competing for best in show. 92nd Annual Academy Awards drew an average of 23.6 million viewers. That is the lowest ratings in the show's entire history. Just six years ago, the awards show brought in more than 40 million viewers. A number of factors went at play here, from the show's length to the many other entertainment options viewers can choose from. Probably didn't help that some of this year's biggest blockbusters, like Avengers Endgame, didn't win any major awards. One critic said, quote, the Oscars felt like a train that got jogged off its tracks. Wow. <laughs> and that's probably putting it nicely. Yeah, you said you were a little disappointed. Uh, overall? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I you know, I get the idea. See, theoretically, without a host, things should move along quicker. Right, and didn't. Should. Yeah, didn't. All right, let's check on the roadways. What's happening, Marcus? And see, I think just the opposite. If you don't have somebody running the ship, of course it's going to run astray. Mm-hmm. So Look what happens to us yeah. <laughs> we don't have a producer. Right now, things are running fairly smoothly out there in the roadways, but we do have some slick conditions out there. Let's get right to Trans Guy 281 at Gra uh, Grayson, or 281 at the airport, rather. You can see there uh, also 281 at Grayson. Uh, so far, traffic moving along fairly well, so no problems just yet in the way of accidents. However, some of these cameras do have, uh, are showing up with uh, some droplets on the lens, and of course, if they're on the lens, it means it could be down below on the street. So 151 at 410, very busy there in both directions. As traffic starts to get a move on, folks start to wake up and venture out. Just remember, allow some extra time, reduce that speed once you do head out on the roadways. So if you're hemming and hawing about bringing the umbrella mm -hmm. along, sounds like today's a good day to commit. Yeah, just, you know, grab it and have it handy because we'll have some showers off and on. We've got some out there right now. And, uh, you know, throughout the day, it won't be raining constantly. Now, late tonight is when we're going to see the potentially uh, heavy rain. There's this. So our commute in tomorrow is going to be a problem. Mm, that's going to be a potential. Yeah, yeah the, the window of opportunity is going to be between about, say, midnight, 4 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. 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 Right. And then for most everybody, when we hit the heart of the commute, a lot of that's going to be out of, out of the picture. That's so, good news. As, as things are looking as of right now. First of all, take a look at this uh, live cam, and, or excuse me, this uh, KSAT Connect picture. And that was beautiful. Great picture yesterday. We had a lot of clouds, obviously, and there were a few peaks here and there as the sun was trying to squeak on through. I don't think we're going to be seeing any sunrises, uh, any good sunrises or sunsets today, nor sunrise tomorrow. Sunset tomorrow, kind of jumping ahead of myself, but that's going to be pretty good because we are going to be clearing out. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. And we've got this line, which there wasn't much out there just uh, maybe an hour, hour and a half ago. And the line has definitely started to form up with some uh, moderate showers here and there. There were a couple of lightning strikes being detected earlier this morning, and that's kind of uh, kind of gone by the wayside. Things have settled down just a little bit, but uh, moderate and even a couple of heavier downpours right there around Bandera. And then all this is kind of sliding up to the north and to the northeast. Now, even though nothing's being picked up in town, uh, there's a lot of mist out there and some light little sprinkles too light to be picked up on radar. So yeah, the roads, just assume that the roads are wet this morning. They're gonna pretty much stay this way all day long. 47 degrees at the airport, 50 Castroville, 45 Randolph, which these numbers are actually a little bit above normal, but it's the humidity out there and the wind. There's a little bit of a wind chill and it's just that damp cold that really kind of you stand out there too long and it it kind of gets you and wind is out of the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour and it's going to be basically that throughout the rest of today. Here's the rapid update computer model, and it's got scattered showers around throughout the rest of the morning here and there. Uh, maybe a few breaks in the action, not, you know, complete this kind of.
broad brushes things a little bit, so it won't be raining constantly throughout the rest of the afternoon. But we go into late tonight, and there's that band of some heavy rain. There's an upper low that's going to be sliding across the area, and this will start about midnight in the wee hours of tomorrow morning, and we could see, <coughs> excuse me, some heavy downpours associated with this, maybe an inch, a couple of inches of rain and those localized spots. And so even though most of this is then going to be out of here by the time we hit the, the morning commutes by, say, seven, six, seven o'clock in the morning, there could still be a lot of runoff, maybe some, uh, you know, streams and creeks that have a lot of rain in them as well or a lot of runoff. And then we will continue to clear on out. So again, the timing of this is looking like it's going to hit at a very opportune time between say midnight four o'clock in the morning. Then we'll see some sunshine by the afternoon tomorrow. And here's what the satellite and radar loop looks like. Everything's coming in here out of the southwest and it's this huge, huge swath of moisture. There's the upper low right there around Phoenix. And this is what's pumping in all that moisture from the Pacific Ocean. So that's why we've got some cool air down here at the surface and all that moisture and clouds riding over top of it. And it's that damp kind of chill. And this low is basically going to work its way almost straight to the east and come in right across us. And that's why the best opportunity to see some of that heavy rain is going to be then late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Then we'll clear out. We've got a nice little stretch of rain or stretch of nice weather. Pardon me coming on in here for tomorrow afternoon in through the rest of the work week the weekend. Not as pretty 49 degrees today at noon. A couple of showers around here. Northeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour and then 50. Basically, what you can take from this is the fact that temperatures won't be moving much, if at all, throughout the day with still more showers around here. Then we have the chance for that heavy rain tonight. Again, window of opportunity is about midnight to four o'clock in the morning. So most of the really heavy stuff is going to be out of here by the time we hit the morning commute, although there could be some runoff and temperatures stay steady in through tomorrow morning. Then we make it up to 65 degrees, so about normal tomorrow afternoon with more sunshine and with the clearer skies and another little surge of some cooler air. We are going to see temperatures get down to normal Thursday morning, only stay in the upper 50s. Plenty of sunshine, though, upper 30s Friday morning and then sunny and uh, mostly sunny and 60 on Friday. More clouds over the weekend, much milder temperatures over the weekend. There may be a couple of uh, well, a sprinkle here or there and a shower or two later on Sunday. We'll make it up to 75 degrees Sunday and Monday with a couple of more showers. Wow, all over the place. Just about. All right, thanks. Right now it is 552. We're at 47 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. After the break, how to observe National Make a Friend Day. We're going to make friends right now if you have winning lottery numbers. Pick sure. three, five, eight, five, Fireball five, daily four, six, two, two, eight, Fireball eight. And your cash five numbers, eight, 12, 13, 27, and 30. Texas two step, 21, 23, 25, 33, with a bonus ball of five. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, our team is live in New Hampshire on this huge day in the race for 2020. Votes already coming in from the nation's first primary. We'll have the very latest right here on GMA. A new and emotional message from Kobe Bryant's wife this morning. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth with more. Tonight, Vanessa Bryant opening up about the death of her husband, Kobe, and their 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. Posting this video on Instagram of a proud father coaching Gigi and her team. Vanessa writing, it's like I'm trying to process Kobe being gone, but my body refuses to accept my Gigi will never come back to me. It feels wrong. The same way he committed as a player, he's committing as a coach. She adds, why should I be able to wake up another day when my baby girl isn't? Kobe and Gianna killed with seven others when the helicopter they were riding in crashed into the mountains near Calabasas. Kobe spoke about just what coaching meant to him in his last interview with the LA Times. So I think coaching uh, young kids is the most important thing we can do. It's a great opportunity to not just prepare them for the game, but put them on the path to hopefully prepare them for life. And services held today for John Altobelli, along with his wife Carrie and daughter Alyssa, who were all killed in the crash. And a public memorial service is planned for Kobe and Gianna right here at the Staples Center on the 24th. Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
Well, today is a day to be a little extra friendly because it's National Make a Friend Day. If you're not sure how to go about it, one of the simplest ways to make new friends is to explore your interests by taking a class or joining a club. If you're wondering how to observe the holiday, make a new friend, and use National Make a Friend Day hashtag to post on social media. And good luck. Right now, still ahead, we'll hear from experts on how you can boost your child's confidence and help them become better readers. That's a win-win situation. Transguide right now. We are on the lookout for more rain in the forecast. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Local business owners will need to find a new store after fire destroys their building. Right now, investigators are still trying to determine what caused it. One neighborhood on the north side struggling to prevent squatters. Now people in the community are blaming the defense uh, attorney's uh, office for being too lenient on trespassing laws. And taking a look outside with live cam. I got a little rain in the area. It's going to make for a messy morning commute, but Mike is standing by with your forecast. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is February 11th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. You probably need a little umbrella today, especially later on tonight. Here's Mike with more on what looks to be a very wet forecast in the coming days. Umbrella and jacket, yeah, and the wet and part of that forecast is really going to be coming in the overnight hours uh, tonight and <clears> early, <throat> early tomorrow morning. More on that in a second. Uh, not bad looking from this vantage point from the airport looking off toward the east, uh, but up to the north, obviously, we do have some uh, showers and even a couple of thunderst uh, thunderstorms. We've got a few lightning strikes showing up there right around Kerrville right now. We've had a couple of them this morning. Hadn't been too much, and as you can see, most everything is kind of sliding to the east and drifting up to the north a little bit. Uh, Moderates and even a couple of heavier downpours there, northern Bandera County, like I said, up by Kerrville with those a uh, couple of lightning strikes and over by Canyon Lake. And then there was nothing, and there's that little spot that popped up right there on the east side over there by uh, 10 and 1604 sliding up to the north as well. And then there's a lot of mist and drizzle as well. So we'll continue to see some of these showers around this morning. So uh, I know Officer Trujillo is going to advise this. Leave a little extra early. Pretty good idea. 43 Helotus, 47 in town, 44 in Canyon Lake. Temperatures are actually a little bit above normal, but we've got a lot of humidity out there, all that moisture in the air, and there's a bit of a wind chill. So it's one of those yeah, you want to keep your collar turned up because it just sneaks down the back of your neck. Molds on the high side. This was yesterday's reading. I have a feeling today's reading is going to be even higher than that with all the moisture in the air. Temperatures really aren't going to be going much of anywhere throughout the day. We'll have showers, maybe a thunderstorm, a couple of claps of lightning and thunder here and there throughout the rest of uh, this morning as well as today. And again, we really don't move all that much. We stay Oh, about 50, maybe later on this afternoon. And then we see the better chance of rain coming in here overnight. We'll talk more about that. Nice little stretch of uh, beautiful weather. Will it last into the weekend? Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. And the question is, with the wet roads, I see an accident. That is an accident, but not on the highways. That's one on, one on the surface street. So that's really not going to cause uh, any issues for folks. However, this could now we're looking at these long turns and uh, these connector ramps and once these things get damp they can get very very slick so you want to slow down well ahead of all those areas now right now 21 up there by the airport you can see down below east and westbound main lanes of 410 looking pretty good connector ramps not congested just yet and so far the roads are dry but as that changes so do your chances for being involved in accidents remember reduce that speed increase that follow distance and put away those distractions this morning those cell phones and those coffee cups mark Thank you, Marcus. Top story this morning. Arson investigators continue to investigate a fire at a west side business. Firefighters put out the fire in the 1300 block of Culebra late last night. They say the fire was coming through the roof of a convenience store. The owners will need to find a new location because fire officials say the building is a total loss and is actually at risk of collapsing. We'll hear more from fire officials from Katrina Weber in our next half hour. A Northside community says they are running out of options dealing with homelessness. Community members say panhandlers near I-10 and Vance Jackson are seeking shelter in empty homes in the Delview neighborhood. They say squatters will even force open fences and board up doors. Many of them say the city and San Antonio police programs have not given the results they have expected. 
The community says the issue comes with how the county deals with criminal trespassing charges. The district attorney disagrees. I think people figure, why call the police? Why report them? Nothing's going to get done. Uh, one of the things that I'm hearing is some, from some of my neighbors is that, hey, we're going to take, you know, action when we see these, these, these people in our area, in our, in our property, in our, on, our, on our property. Nothing about my policy has affected uh, law enforcement's ability to make an arrest. And as a matter of fact, I would assert that they continue to make these arrests. Between April and December of 2019, the district attorney's office says there was a 24% drop in the number of criminal trespassing cases. That's the year the policy took effect. You can also read more about this story right now on KSAT.com. The World Health Organization will open a global forum today to address coordinated response to coronavirus. More than 400 of the world's leading experts will meet to discuss rapid diagnostics, vaccine and effective treatments. Health experts are worried they are only seeing the tip of the iceberg with the coronavirus at this time. So far, more than 1,000 people have died. More than 42,000 have been infected with it. The virus's 2.4% mortality rate, lower than that of the SARS epidemic in 2002, which was 9.6%, but the total death count is already higher. Meanwhile, Metro Health is monitoring a group of travelers in San Antonio who came back from China this week. Officials are also watching the group under quarantine at JBSA Lackland. There are no confirmed cases of the coronavirus virus rather in Bear County, and Metro Health says there is a low risk to the public. Officials are also setting up coronavirus test kits, but they will take about two weeks to become fully operational. President Trump, Vice President Pence both made an appearance at a campaign rally in New Hampshire. No coincidence, this was on the eve of the New Hampshire primary. President Trump nearly turned New Hampshire red last election and is pushing to win the state in 2020. CNN's Nadia Romero has the latest from Manchester. New Hampshire is a thorn in the president's side. He lost this state to Hillary Clinton back in 2016 by 0.4%. So his whole game plan now is to get people talking about him and his rally, and that's why it's happening the night before the primary. If this crowd lined up outside of President Trump's New Hampshire rally is any indication. Hello, Manchester. The president's support is strong on the East Coast. We have more in this arena and outside of this arena than all of the other candidates, meaning the Democrats, put together and multiplied times five. And that includes right here at St. Anselm College in Manchester, where you'll find some of Trump's young and loyal voters. I like what he's doing with the economy. It helps small businesses a lot better. I know a lot job creation is very important. Right now, I'm thinking Donald Trump, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but he's like my number one right now. Just about an hour north in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, there's a different sentiment about the president from Susan Alex. If he's resting on his laurels because he got acquitted, so did O.J. Simpson. How did that work out for him? While she likes Amy Klobuchar, Portsmouth jewelry store owner Eddie Ahmed. Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg. About 40 percent of New Hampshire voters are undeclared or independent. The state narrowly went to Hillary Clinton in 2016. President Trump hopes to put the state in his column in 2020. Number one is the Middle East issue. Number two is the climate change. Ahmed says he wants a president to improve the future for his 21-year-old son, Aaron. Oh, wow, he looks just like you. Believe it or not, he is a full supporter of President Trump. Wow. <laughs> the Ahmed home, a house divided and the land of the free. As an American, we have the opportunity to choose who want to lead us. If you take a look at all the recent polling, it shows Bernie Sanders with a commanding lead. Pete Buttigieg in second place, still living off of that momentum from the Iowa caucuses. But the same polling shows that New Hampshire voters, nearly half of them, have yet to make a firm decision. In Manchester, New Hampshire, I'm Nadia Romero. In our next half hour, we'll hear more about how the Democratic candidates are preparing for tonight's primary. And be sure to watch GMSA at 9 this morning, where CNN's Karen Kafa joins us to talk about what we can all expect from New Hampshire. American forces may not be able to train in the Philippines anymore. The Philippines government gave the United States a notice threatening an agreement between the two nations. The Philippines president has often criticized U.S. policies despite the two countries having close historic ties with one another. The decision could have a big impact on how the U.S. keeps its presence in the South China Sea and how America can remain a strong counterweight to China in the region. 
Prosecutors say Roger Stone should spend seven to nine years in prison. The one-time informal advisor to President Trump scheduled to be sentenced this week. He was convicted on seven charges related to Russian interference in the 2016 election. They involved lying under oath, obstructing Congress, and tampering with a witness. Prosecutors say the requested jail time is based on a formula for sentencing. Well, the first of two public hearings to scale back a historic environmental law will be held today in Denver, Colorado. The Trump administration is looking to limit the impact of the National Environmental Protection Act. It was signed by President Richard Nixon in 1970. The meeting in Denver will allow the public to give feedback on the proposed change. The act lays out our nation's principal environmental protections, including pollution and limiting industrial uses of public land. Time check, 609, 47 degrees. Move over, Venus. A new planet is destined to be the romantic, the most romantic in the solar system. Pluto is showing us its true beating heart. It's an important job that often goes overlooked. Court reporter, we're talking uh, with Paul Venema about what it's like to live the life of the other kind of court reporter after the break. And live cam giving us a look outside. Look at that, just the glimmer of a sunrise on the horizon. Not gonna see a whole lot of sun though, probably today. My cash forecast still to come. Six thirteen. Welcome back. The job is pressure packed, complicated, and sometimes educational. We're talking about court reporters, the person sitting alongside the judge during a trial, making a written record of every word spoken. Paul Venema takes us into the courtroom for a closer look at what is one of the most important jobs there. You see them in most every trial on TV, usually barely visible, sitting in front of the witness stand, quietly recording every word spoken for the record. We literally at the Court of Appeals could not do our job, but for your good job. Chief Justice Sandy Bryant Marion is talking about court reporters as she reads a proclamation from the mayor and city council designating this week in their honor. It is the reporter's job to produce an accurate written record of a trial or any legal proceeding that may need a record. We are writing on that little machine. We're writing everything everyone says. Not only that, um, we're also identifying the speakers and doing it fast. They must be able to write 225 words per minute. That's a challenge since most people speak at upwards of 300 words. Incredible amount of responsibility and incredibly hard because of different people in the way they talk. Trust me, I know, I speak very fast. My court reporter is a saint to deal with me. The job takes skill and training and requires certification. After all, there's a lot at stake, whether a criminal proceeding or a civil matter involving millions of dollars. It's a skill that has to be developed. And it might look easy, but it is not that easy to do. And it can be educational, since they're dealing with legal experts as well as experts in a variety of fields. It's interesting. Every day is different um, after 26 years. Um, I still love it every day. Complicated and often challenging, it's not an easy job. But whatever the case, a court reporter always has the best seat in the house. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. All right now, 615. Let's check on the roadways once again. Marcus, any new accidents to report? Well, the highways look pretty good, but we do have an, a motor vehicle uh, accident that's a motor vehicle struck a pole over on the east side. But as far as the main lanes, the highways are concerned, uh, those look pretty good. That accident's going to be Martin Luther King Drive at West Hines. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that. Highways themselves, though, still look pretty good. Let's take a look outside through Transguide. There's Highway 151 at 410. You can see Eastbound and westbound lanes of Highway 151, very busy right now as folks uh, making their way uh, between 1604 and 410. Just remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Thank you, sir. Sue. Ooh, when you Overnight like tonight, that. we're going to get a lot of rain. Yes, uh, potentially some pretty hefty downpours, especially 281 and a little bit uh, to the what? You thought you were in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> we did. We, not today. We kind of did too. It's not yet. <laughs> Am I safe? For now. No. Well, we've got about 45 minutes, but go right ahead. A <laughs> lot can happen. <laughs> Deal with her. We too. Uh, anyway, great picture. I love that one with the moon 
don't know if it's setting, it's just rising, pardon me. And uh, I expect we had a little bit of a couple of breaks in the clouds. I don't know if we'll see much of a uh, moon or a sun today just because of those clouds are going to be hanging on in there as they are right now. And temperatures are, uh, it's on the chilly side and it, it feels a lot colder than what it is because of all this moisture out there. We do have some uh, showers, even a few thunderstorms, and it's been kind of back and forth as to see a few lightning strikes. They sort of fade off and now there are a few more lightning strikes up here right around uh, Kerrville and nothing in the immediate vicinity of San Antonio. This one little spot right uh, right there on the east side did tend to move off, but it's right along I-10 right now. And there are some a uh, few heavier showers though up in portions and even a couple of thunderstorms up in portions of the hill country right now. Again, temperatures are mid 40s, a little bit above normal, but it's all the moisture out there and a slight bit of a wind chill as well. So it's it really sneaks down the back of your neck this morning. 38 right now is what it feels like in Randolph. Same thing, New Braunfels and 37 in Lost Maples is the wind chill. Wind is out of the northeast at about 10, 15 miles per hour, and it's going to be staying like this throughout the day. Everything stays like this throughout the day. Temperatures, wind, and a few showers around here. Now, it won't rain constantly, of course, as what this uh, computer model is indicating. As a matter of fact, we may see a few more breaks by later on this afternoon and this evening. But then we go into the overnight hours, and this is when that heavier band of rain is going to develop. Basically between, say, midnight and about uh, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And all this will shift off to the east. So once we get into the morning commute, so about, uh, say, 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, most all of the heavy stuff is going to be on out of here. There's probably going to be some runoff, some ponding on the roads left over from all of this. But again, the the window of the heaviest stuff is going to be pretty much before most everybody heads off to uh, to work and school tomorrow morning. And then by the afternoon, we are going to see a little bit more in the way of some uh, clearing. And it's going to be a good looking afternoon tomorrow. It's going to be warm up into the mid 60s. And then we've got a nice little stretch of some uh, very pretty weather for Thursday and Friday, although on the cool side, another little reinforcing shot of cooler air is going to be coming on in here by the uh, end of the week. 49 degrees today at noon. Speaking of cool, it stays on the cool side all day long and temperatures basically won't be moving too much today. Wind out of the northeast at uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. A couple of showers, even a few thunderstorms around here. Then the heavy rain is going to be tonight again, basically between about midnight, four o'clock in the morning. It'll slide off to the east. Skies begin to clear out. Plenty of sunshine in the afternoon, 65. Reinforcing shot of cooler air comes in here, so we'll only be at 57 on Thursday, but plenty of sunshine, so a very good looking day. Friday, Valentine's Day. Public service announcement, gentlemen, don't forget Valentine's Day is on Friday. <laughs> Get your cards right now so you're not lined up along the card aisle there at the grocery store. Uh, and then the weekend looks uh, like it's going to be milder with more clouds out there and a couple of showers. Yeah, get it early. It's always fun. All the guys are just lined right up. All lined up with flowers in hand and cards in hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the express checkout. Hurry up. 620, 47 degrees. A judge has handed down the harshest sentence yet in the college admissions scandal. We have more in your GMA First Look coming up after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. She's had a tiny cough. <laughs> See you at five. Seriously? Protection. Lysol kills over 100 illness-causing germs and viruses, even those that may cause coughs. Lysol, what it takes to protect. Mommy, we made you princess toast. Oh, I have no idea what's in princess toast, but thanks to this USP seal, I know exactly what's in my Nature Made gummies. Nature Made has the first gummies verified by USP, a nonprofit organization that sets purity and potency standards. How to make a delicious bowl of oatmeal. Start with whole grain Quaker Oats, then add a spoonful of boldness. Definitely a cup of you deserve this. Your perfect bowl is yours to create. Our oats, your creation. Quaker Oats. <coughs> Skip to the good part with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Now with 25% more concentrated power. Nothing works faster for powerful cold relief. Oh, what a relief it is. So fast.
In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the biggest Varsity Blues sentencing yet. Doug Hodge, former CEO of a global investment firm and father of seven, on Friday was leveled with a nine-month prison sentence after pleading guilty for paying nearly $900,000 to get four of his children into elite colleges under false pretenses. Hodge is in a first-person op-ed written for the Wall Street Journal. He says, I failed to scrutinize the application process as carefully as I should have. I failed to ask tough questions and I looked the other way on questionable behavior that I never would have tolerated in my business career. So what could this sentence mean for Lori Lachlan and the rest of the Varsity Blues parents who are yet to face trial? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Paula Ferris, ABC News, New York. We may finally see the long-awaited a controversial Sprint T-Mobile merger go through. Multiple reports say the a federal judge is expected to okay the $26 billion deal today. The merger could create a company with 90 million customers. Well, Samsung has promised to unveil some, quote, innovative devices at its event today in San Francisco. But the company sort of let the cat out of the bag already because it showed its new foldable phone during an Oscars commercial Sunday night. But you can expect new versions of other phones today as well. First ever slot machines that can be played over the internet are now available. They've been installed at the Hard Rock Casino at Atlantic City, New Jersey. These slots can only be played by those with Hard Rock accounts. If they're all being used, online players will join a wait list. Well, scientists say Pluto's frozen heart feature may actually beat. The heart-shaped feature, which you can see in the middle of the planet, was discovered in 2015. It's made of nitrogen. Scientists found that during the day, Pluto's nitrogen heart warms up enough to become a vapor, causing it to expand. At night, it cools and contracts. Researchers refer to this fluctuation as Pluto's heartbeat and may now make it the solar system's most romantic planet. 626, 47 degrees. A new Fairfax KSAT Rivard report poll is out. We're going to take a look at the process that went into the poll and how you can view the results. Spurs sinking, not enough baskets to win a game. We'll see how they blew yet another lead, this time to the Denver Nuggets on the road. Taking a peek outside with Trans Guides, it's going to be a busy morning commute, everybody. So pack your patience. We'll check in with Marcus and get an update. This West Side business is out of business now due to a fire. And firefighters say the next step is the building itself will have to go. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about that. The New Hampshire primary is happening today and already we've got some surprised results from the first communities that voted. I'm Trevor Alton, Manchester on the latest coming up. Outside with live cam, cool, breezy and damp. And that's just right now. What do you see the forecast as we head into the overnight hours. Good morning. It's Tuesday, February 11th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Uh, roadways, uh, a little bit of a problem in some areas. Highways still look pretty good. Now, we do have some uh, dampness out there. We're seeing it, the moisture on the lens. That uh, more than likely means that those surface streets, uh, some of those elevated roadways could be a little slick. So you want to slow down well ahead of those areas today. Winter type jacket, an umbrella, maybe all the above today. Yeah, just because it's that damp chill out there and we haven't had a lot of rain in the past couple of hours in town. On the northwest side, there was some and you said you had some mist. I had some mist morning. on, yeah. Yeah, the roads are going to be damp this morning, but like I said, there hasn't been a whole lot of rain so far, but there will be some throughout the day. Temperatures are 48 degrees, but again, it's that damp cool out there. There's a good breeze 10 15 miles per hour that adds to it and really temperatures aren't going to be moving that much throughout the day at all and then we have the chance for some pretty hefty rain late tonight and in the early early morning hours tomorrow we're not seeing any glow of the sunrise yet it's about an hour until it comes up but uh, we're not going to see any beautiful picture perfect kind of sunrises this morning. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. And most of the rain is up there in the uh, hill country. Like I said we had a couple of those showers that moved through the northwest portion of Bear County earlier this morning. And right now up around uh, Kerrville, there are a couple of uh, uh, maybe even a few lightning strikes up there, but uh, nothing in the immediate vicinity over by uh, Seguin, a couple of showers there. And we did have that one little batch on the east side that moved on through. So no rain right now in most of the major highways, but 
There will be some throughout the rest of today. Temperatures have been steady all morning long and they're going to be staying steady throughout the rest of the day. And of course, we do have that little bit of a uh, wind chill to deal with. Moles on the high side. I assume that's going to be going up when the updated numbers come out in about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Ash is moderate. Heavy rain chances late tonight. Most of that should be gone by this time tomorrow morning. Then we're going to start to clear out. Nice little stretch of weather. Beautiful sunshine. A little on the cool side to finish up the week. The weekend. That's coming up. Time saver traffic right now. And uh, well, we got what? One spot over there? Well, no, that's the uh, that's where we have the uh, rodeo ongoing oh, okay. with all the traffic there, uh, trying to get all the animals and the kids in and out of that facility. Uh, but right now, the highways actually look pretty good. Despite the, the conditions right now, we are still looking fairly well. We do have one major accident not on any of our highways, uh, but it is a motor vehicle pole accident. A vehicle struck a pole right there, the intersection of Martin Luther King Drive at West Hine. But take a look outside through Transguide. This is I-10 at the Dominion. As you can see, those eastbound lanes already starting to stack on those eastbound main lanes headed back towards that I-10 604 interchange. Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Fire investigators will start the day with a mystery on their hands. They're trying to find out what caused a fire that destroyed a West Side convenience store. Katrina Weber is live in the 1300 block of Calabria Road with that story. And we understand that firefighters faced a losing battle from the very beginning, Katrina. Well, that's right. They told us that the flames were already through the roof when they got here late last night. Now there is no roof at all. In fact, there's not much left of this at all. Firefighters did put up a pretty forceful fight. They blasted those flames with water from above. Still, they say it was a struggle, mainly because of all the merchandise inside the store, which just provided more fuel to the fire. Now, again, nothing much left here at all. Nothing much to save, including the building itself. I know the building is uh, it's not going to hold up the code. They're going to have to tear it down. And it's complete content loss. And we've applied a lot of water to make sure everything's out. So there's not going to be anything salvageable but the lot itself. Now, this is the former Food Mart mom and pop. Uh, there weren't any people inside the store at the time, even though the sign outside says it's open 24 hours per day. Firefighters say the store was closed at the time, and again, no one hurt. Now, var arson investigators were called out here last night, but we don't know what, if anything, they found in terms of how this fire started. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Today, we are getting a feel how voters are reacting to issues affecting Bear County. Just moments ago, the first Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll was officially released. Dave Metz works with a polling firm and talked to more than 600 likely Bear County voters. He will release four polls over the next year, today's being the first one. Steve Spreester spoke to him about the work he does and what Metz asked people around the county. I think we had a good uh, diverse set of survey respondents. We covered uh, uh, as many issues as we could in the space of a relatively short survey. Um, and we got some interesting responses. There are things that uh, local residents are happy about. There's things they think uh, could be improved. Um, and I think we did a pretty good job of covering the full spectrum of things that are on Bear County voters' minds. Well, if you want to go through the poll results with Dave Metz, we have a live stream this afternoon at 2.30 on KSAT.com. And right now on our website, we do have the results of the first poll available for you to view, including voters' views on Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf and San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg. Just look for Bear Facts on our homepage. Nationally, the polls are opening in New Hampshire for the presidential primary. Senator Bernie Sanders is the favorite in the country's first primary vote, which he won back in 2016. Meanwhile, other candidates are fighting to hang on. ABC's Trevor Alt has more. The first votes have been cast in New Hampshire and already some surprises. Senator Amy Klobuchar leading after three tiny townships, but in Dixville Notch, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg won for both Democrats and Republicans, even though he's not even on the ballot. Also overnight, Bernie Sanders holding a rock concert rally. The Vermont senator won New Hampshire handily in 2016, and it could be a repeat victory today. If we win here tomorrow, I think we got a path to victory for the Democratic nomination. Sanders finds himself atop the race in New Hampshire and according to a new Quinnipiac poll across the entire country. But Mayor Pete Buttigieg with rising numbers of his own. 
trying to position himself as the sensible alternative. And there is a hole in Senator Sanders' plan uh, financially that's bigger than the entire size of the United States economy. Uh, I, I think uh, it's an example of the kind of politics that frustrates people, big promises and not a lot behind it. Outside that top tier of two, some candidates fighting falling numbers. <laughs> Senator Elizabeth Warren has been crisscrossing the state, as has former Vice President Joe Biden, though he's trying to look past New Hampshire. Stick with me 24 more hours, and I promise you, we're going to do just fine. Some of their momentum has shifted to Amy Klobuchar. As you've probably heard, we're on a bit of a surge. And a reminder, New Hampshire is a much more typical secret ballot primary. It's a lot easier to administer than the Iowa caucuses. Officials here are banking on cleaner results, and we could have the first declared state victor in the race tonight. Trevor Ault, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. And to find out more about the New Hampshire primary, be sure to watch GMSA at 9 today. CNN's Karen Kafer will join us live to tell us more what we can expect. You can also find out more information on this year's election by visiting KSAT.com. In the morning, consumer news, Boeing continuing tests on the 737 MAX aircraft with scheduled non-commercial flights. Boeing flew a MAX jet from Seattle to Kansas City yesterday with a stop in Lincoln, Nebraska. Company says the engineering flights only have a small test team on board to monitor new software updates on the aircraft. However, the flights are not certification flights. Boeing says it hopes to stick to its timeline, which is to have aircraft ready for commercial use sometime by this summer. The maker of Schick Razors is giving up on its plans to buy its rival Harry's. The decision to drop the nearly $1.4 billion takeover comes a week after the Federal Trade Commission sued to stop it. Federal officials argued the merger would eliminate too much competition in the shaving industry, which has been dominated by two brands, Schick and Gillette. Retailer Forever 21 now getting ready to sell itself to a group of buyers. Those include some of the country's biggest mall owners. The buyers have offered $81 million for the struggling chain. And Chipotle says it is going into guac mode. The restaurant chain says it's celebrating a year of its reward program by offering free guacamole. If you're a member of the Chipotle Rewards, you can get the guacamole free for the rest of the year. Guacamole usually costs about $2 extra at Chipotle. It was a mile-high fall for our Spurs. Silver and Black lost another game on the rodeo road trip last night, this time to the Denver Nuggets, 127-120. Spurs look like they might get their first win of this year's rodeo road trip after leading the Nuggets by 14 points in halftime and building a 23-point lead in the third quarter. Then the defense fell apart. Seven players. The Spurs put up double digits led by LaMarcus Aldridge's 33 points, but at the end they could not compete with an explosive Nuggets team that collectively scored 74 points in the second half alone. Spurs have another chance tonight to get that first rodeo road trip win. They play the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight at 7. And remember to join us on GMSA tomorrow for what we hope is highlights and hopefully positive reactions. Oh. More on that coming up on GMSA at 9 as we dissect what continues mm -hmm. to go wrong on the road. Right now, 640, 47 degrees. Reading is one of the most important life skills, but if your child gets anxious trying to read, it could negatively affect their reading comprehension. We're going to break it all down for you coming up after the break. Something many parents may be familiar with, their kid hates reading or may have anxiety about it. But that anxiety can impact whether they become proficient readers. If left unchecked, GMSA producer Gretchen Naruzzi has the details. Reading is one of the fundamental building blocks for learning. But what happens if your child has anxiety about reading? Researchers asked 600 first and second graders from the Midwest about their feelings on reading. They also measured reading achievement by having the child pronounce and read words aloud. They found the kids who had anxiety about reading in the fall of the school year had lower reading test scores in the spring. This suggests parents may want to focus on reducing children's negative feelings about reading. Parents can ease their child's anxiety by praising them. Be specific when pointing out their progress. Take them to the library to listen to audiobooks. Studies have shown using audiobooks allows listeners to practice language comprehension skills. For GMSA, I'm Gretchen Neruzzi. Training right now at KSAT.com, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality made a list of the clearest lakes in Texas, some of them not too far away from San Antonio. Canyon Lake and Lake Travis 
our short drive away and made the list. If you are okay going for a drive, the Brandy Branch Reservoir, Amistad Reservoir, and Lake Allen Henry are also crystal clear. It's important to note that this list does not include rivers, many of which are clear and can be found all over Texas. Although the rodeo is still going strong, never too early to plan for a fiesta. The Texas Cavaliers announced this year's theme for the River Parade will be 2020 Vision. Also announcing that Spurs legend Tony Parker is the honorary what? Grand Marshal for this year's parade. And this year's charitable honoree will be the Will Smith Zoo School. Parade tickets and fiesta medals are now on sale and the parade is April 20th. You can find both of these stories right now on KSAT.com. Let's check traffic at quarter to seven. Marcus, what's happening? Well, the highways still look pretty good. So as you can see, everything in the green. Now we are seeing some slowdowns. Uh, first eastbound Highway 90 as you're approaching 1604. A little bit of slowdown, and that's uh, for the connector ramps there. And then we also have slowdowns there. Bandera Road and 1604 area, and that's to be expected for this time of the morning. Let's take a look at Transguide right now. 35, 37 rather at Salado Creek down on the southeast side. You can see travel north and southbound so far. No issues and then Highway 151 and 410. Things are very busy in both directions along Highway 151, but more specifically on those eastbound main lanes. 21 is Bruce Wood Lane has more than enough room out there with no problems there. I 10 in Callahan and then take a look at I 10 in Frio. Inbound outbound lanes running pretty good until you're eastbound approaching that 35 north and south split. And then we have a little bit of congestion there. Once again, that's just par for the course for just after quarter to seven in the morning. Yes, Michael. Nah, I was just yeah, literally uh -huh. clearing my throat, but <laughs> I wasn't trying to get your attention. That's okay. You have our attention. You do have our attention. All, All our right. attention. All eyes on Mike. There is one of those. What am I, EF Hutton? Uh, <laughs> one of those kind of. Misnomers going around on the internet, I guess you could say, where right. they said the broom. it was that yesterday uh, it was the, the tilt perfect day because of the tilt. Because the tilt of the earth was perfect that a, you could stand a broom on end and balance it. It was at ideal tilt yesterday. Yeah, ideal tilt. Well, right. first of all, and so everybody tilt, started um, standing their brooms up. The tilt of the earth does not change, but you can't do it just any broom. It's twenty three. Well, but if you can balance a broom, you can do it anytime. any day. Mm -hmm. It, the tilt I, we need to find you a broom. I want to see you do it. The tilt, I didn't say I could. The tilt of the earth does not change, obviously. And this is kind of along the lines, there used to be the old one that on the uh, equinox, you could balance an egg on end. If you can balance an egg, you can do it any time. So it has nothing to do with anything. So this is just. But not when you're on a train. Not when you're on a train? Moves around too much. Well, no kidding. <laughs> Anyway, we've got lots of clouds out there this morning. Uh, nothing showing up in this picture. Looking off to the east, off to the northwest, we do have showers and thunderstorms uh, up there around Kerrville, Fredericksburg. Uh, a few of those uh, lightning strikes, you may have a couple of uh, claps of thunder and a few decent downpours as well. And there will be one or two of those pockets where it's a little bit heavier rain today. Most of it's going to be just on the, uh, the light side and not much is showing up in and around town. There may be a little bit of mist around there. Temperatures have been holding steady all morning long. Mid 40s on average, a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. Also, there's all that dampness out there, so it's just it's cold this morning. Wind out of the northeast about 10 15 miles per hour, and we're going to keep that pretty much all day long. Pretty much nothing is going to be changing all day long. Temperatures, uh, the wind, and the chance for some rain. We'll have some light uh, scattered showers around the area throughout the rest of the day. It won't be raining constantly, and that's going to be the situation in through this evening as well. Then we go into late tonight, and that's when, and again, about midnight tomorrow morning, when the line of some heavier thunderstorms, heavier downpours is going to be developing, and that will work its way off to the east. Now, the window of this is basically going to be, say, between about midnight and 4, 430 in the morning. We'll have some leftovers. All that's going to continue to move on out of here. We could see some pretty hefty downpours with this as well. So even though most of it's going to be gone by drive time tomorrow and the morning commute, Still going to have probably some runoff. There may be some ponding here and there. The low spots kind of flooded over. So that'll be something that obviously we're going to be watching in the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning. But could be, like I said, a good gully washer by uh, in the overnight hours. Uh, 49 degrees today at noon with some showers scattered about the area and then 50 for a high. So if we do indeed hit 50 degrees, basically temperatures aren't going to be moving with more showers today, a couple of thunderstorms. Then the heavy rain overnight tonight and early, early tomorrow morning 
50 degrees temperatures stay steady sunshine in the afternoon we hit 65 and then another little uh, reinforcing shot of cooler air comes on in here so just upper 50s close to 60 thursday friday but good looking days cold mornings more clouds warmer this weekend couple of showers thank you michael right now it is 650 we're at 47 degrees well, if you're planning to sell your home this year, you might want to hurry. Join us tomorrow on GMSA, where we're going to tell you why selling your home in the winter could be easier than selling it during the spring or summer. And outside with Live Cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up on your Tuesday, and you're watching GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, our team is live in New Hampshire on this huge day in the race for 2020. Votes already coming in from the nation's first primary. We'll have the very latest right here on GMA. It looks like the owner of this West Side business will have to start all over again. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Fire ripped through this building late last night. The firefighters faced a pretty losing battle. They say there wasn't much they could do because flames already were burning through the roof when they arrived around 930 last night. They put out the fire the best they could, but due to all the merchandise inside, they say that there was quite a struggle. The business in the 1300 block of Calabra Road was closed at the time so no one was here and there were no injuries. Unfortunately, they say the building itself is beyond repair. They say it's unstable and will have to be torn down. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Spurs back in action tonight with another chance to grab that very first win of the Rodeo Road Trip. <laughs> they play the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight uh, at 7 o'clock. Wishful thinking, right? Uh, remember to join us on GMSA tomorrow for highlights and hopefully uh, good news. We'll hear more about what went wrong in last night's game against the Nuggets. That's coming up today on GMSA at 9, the which Sears, we also call group, group therapy. Yeah, the Sears Soapbox is on standby. Uh, it's warmed up. We're going to need an extra step, perhaps. Yeah, we probably will. All right, well, let's check on the roadways. Maybe Marcus has good news for us. Great news for you. Right now, uh, we ha had a minor accident. Uh, Highway 90 Hunt Lane, they, it looks like they moved that out of the way. This is Transguide, I-10 and Frio. No increase in the congestion just yet. Moving over to 21 and 410. Take a look down below, eastbound and westbound lanes of 410 running smoothly with no delays. Connector ramps look great at this point. And then I-10, 410, the interchange. So far, traffic moving swiftly through that interchange. Mike? Well, as you can see in those pictures and also on radar, there's not any rain in and around the metropolitan area right now. We've got some uh, thunderstorms up there around Kerrville, Fredericksburg, just a few lightning strikes being detected. But notice how there's a couple of more uh, sprinkly showers well down at the bottom of your screen there, right around uh, Beeville sliding up to the north. We'll continue to have some rain around throughout the day. These temperatures aren't going anywhere. We've got a little bit of a wind chill. It's that damp chill today and again, steady all day long. Then late tonight and early, early tomorrow morning, some potentially heavy rain. Most of that should be gone by this time tomorrow. And then we clear on out got a nice little stretch through Valentine's Day. Thank you, and thank you for being with us this morning, everybody. See you back here for GMSA at 9. GMA is next.